Hello everyone, it's me Jack, and back with another awful video. Now, judging from the poll that I put up recently on my Instagram, on what collection I sh would show off, uh, you can get to my Instagram down in the link in the description below, I put a video up a few months back talking about my manga collection, which obviously you guys can see here, which I will do probably an updated video at some point, whether I do that or not. But, back to the task at hand anyway. So, I made a poll on my Instagram talking about what kind of collection video I would show off next, whether it be my DVD and Blu-ray collection, my comic book collection, or my video game collection. And, since some of you voted on it, not all of you obviously, I put a well, the winner of the video is obviously the DVD and Blu-ray collection. So without further ado, we got a lot of movies because there's no doubt that obviously people who know me personally and people who have actually met me in person or anything like that know that obviously aside from liking anime and manga and stuff and gaming, I'm obviously a big movie goer which you can see by my t-shirt here. But yeah, without wasting any more further time, I would break, not break, um, I was going to say break the camera, but no. <laughs> but now we're going to go through my entire DVD and Blu-ray collection, and you guys can actually see for yourselves what kind of stuff I have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split it into different genres so you guys can see for yourselves on what I actually have and what I haven't got. So, uh, as I cut over, we're going to go right into the movies. <laughs> right, so from what you guys could remember from my usual video intro, we're going to start off with horror movies. Now, as you guys know me quite well, and judging from my horror studies videos, you guys know that I obviously like my horror movies. So the ones we got up here, we got... I don't know how it's going to show very well on the camera, but um, yeah, we're going to give it a try anyway. So up here we've got uh, The Bride of Frankenstein, uh, The Wolfman, uh, the original Frankenstein, and the original Bela Lugosi Dracula. I recently got into watching more of the black and white Universal monster movies re quite recently. Uh, next to that I've got the extended edition of the original Exorcist. I've got the entire f uh, Omen Pentology right here with uh, all five movies, which is including the remake as well. Uh, next to that I got Deep Blue Sea, which was actually the first DVD I actually ever owned. <laughs> Fun little fact there. Uh, now I've got Deep Blue Sea 2, Deep Blue Sea 3, then we've got Child's Play, Child's Play 2, Child's Play 3, Bride of Chucky, Seed of Chucky, Curse of Chucky, and Cult of Chucky. Then next to that i got the original John Carpenter Halloween, i got Halloween 2, uh, Halloween 2018, and Halloween Kills, the extended edition. Obviously, I don't own Halloween Ends just yet, but I know a lot of people were um, mixed on that. I'm going to quickly change hands on the camera because my arm's actually getting tired already. <laughs> uh, I've got Alien, uh, Aliens, uh, the extended edition, which is like just about nearly three hours long. I've got Predator 1, Predator 2, Alien 3, Alien Resurrection, Alien vs. Predator, the extended edition. Alien vs. Predator 2 Requiem, Robert Rodriguez's Predators, Prometheus, Alien Covenant, and The Predator. Now, it's still a very hard debate on whether or not the Alien and Predator movies are horror or not. I would kind of class them as more like gateway movies into the genre. Then, next, I'm trying to stand on my bed for a sec. So yeah, I've got Killer Clowns from Outer Space, I've got The Meg, The Monster Squad, a Although it is a bootleg copy, I will admit, but trying to find this movie in the UK is the biggest pain in the ass ever. I've got all four original Critters movies. I've got Underworld 1, Underworld Evolution, Underworld Rise of the Lycans. I've got all the original Nightmare on Elm Street movies. I don't own the remake just yet. I have seen it though, and it is what it was. I also have Jason X, which is arguably my favourite Friday the 13th movie. I would fight anyone on that opinion. I know it's a terrible movie, but 
it is my personal favourite. Now I've got uh, Freddy vs. Jason, i got Willy's Wonderland, i got the 1990 remake of Night of the Living Dead, which I'd say is criminally underrated as far as horror movie remakes go. Then I got 28 Days Later and 28 Weeks Later box set. I got An American Werewolf in London. I got Hellfest. I got Deathgasm. I got the Candyman Collector's Edition, which didn't really come with anything, honestly. It was just there because I got it real cheap. I got it for like 50p. <laughs> I got uh, John Carpenter's The Thing. I got The Thing prequel, which isn't as bad as everyone says it is. It's just average. Then I got Tremors Shrieker Island, I got Tremors A Cold Day in Hell, and I got Black Sheep. Uh, here I've got the Necronomicon edition of The Evil Dead. I've got the, also, I've got the Evil Dead trilogy right here. I want to get the Blu-ray version of this uh, Necronomicon edition, because there is a certain Blu-ray version of it that came out a few years back, which not only comes with the first two Evil Dead films, but also a massive version of the Necronomicon, plus the Kandarian Dagger as well from Evil Dead 2. But yeah, I got the original Evil Dead trilogy, and I got the Evil Dead remake, which is actually pretty fucking good. And I also have not seen Evil Dead Rise just yet either. Uh, I also got Lesbian Vampire Killers just here, and I got Eight Legged Freaks, and I'm just going to put the camera down for a sec. You guys can stare into the black void while I try and move the movies out of the way. <laughs> probably cut this down a little bit. Move that to one side. Right. So now, over in the far corner, I got the, you probably won't be able to see it very well, because Tremors keeps falling down on it. I got Little Shop of Horrors, the remake with Rick Moranis. I got Ghoulies 1 and 2 in a box set. Um, Final Destination 3 and the Final Destination. I got the original Scream box set, which has only the first three films, and I got Scream 4. I've not seen Scream 5 and 6 yet, and I refuse to watch the MTV series again, because that, quite frankly, actually sucked quite badly. So if I quickly try and ease these back in there. Try and slide them back up in there as well. If I can actually get it back in. There we go. But yeah, just next to that from what you saw earlier, I got the Saw Collection, only the extended version of Saws 1 through 5. I will get the other ones very, very soon. I have seen all of them, and I quite like them a lot. Uh, Rob Zombie's House with Thousand Corpses, uh, The Devil's Rejects, Three from Hell. I oddly like Rob Zombie movies, despite how trashy and shit they are. I find them oddly enjoyable. Then we've got Jeepers Creepers 1, Jeepers Creepers 2, and Jeepers Creepers 3. I've not seen Reborn yet, but I will eventually get around to it once I find the DVD or the Blu-ray of it soon. We've got Hellraiser 3, Hell on Earth, Hellraiser Hellbound 2. I've got Hellraiser 1, the original. I've got Leprechaun 5 in the Hood, Leprechaun 4 in Space, Leprechaun 3, Leprechaun 2, and the original Leprechaun. All great movies, and the reboot that WWE did, Leprechaun Origins, was fucking terrible, despite the fact they got Hornswoggle to play him, but it was still a pretty bad movie. Uh, but next, I got The Lost Boys, the original. I got The Rocky Horror Picture Show, the original as well, because you can't beat it. Uh, you got Late Phases, Night of the Lone Wolf. I only watched it a couple times and thought it was actually alright. Uh, Stakeland 2, really good series of movies. Criminal, slightly underrated, I would say. Then we got Piranha 3D. Really fucking good movie. And especially 3 Double D. And I also do like Joe Dante's original from the 70s. Also really good. And James Cameron's sequel, Piranha 2 The Spawning. Then we got Sweeney Todd and the Demon Barber of Fleet Street. Great movie. Great musical. Never saw the stage play, but I really do want to at some point. Uh, we got Peter Jackson's Brain Dead, the director's cut. Awesome movie, uh, just uh, absolute hilarious movie in general, really, if I'm honest. Uh, Taika Waititi's What We Do in the Shadows, one of my favourite uh, mockumentary films ever made. American Psycho, great movie, great book, uh, great for anyone, really, that enjoys very artsy films. Then we got uh, Michael Doherty's um, Trick or Treat, 
and we got Stephen King's It miniseries. I was debating whether or not I put this in the TV shows or not, but I thought people treat it as a movie anyway, so I thought, screw it, why not? Then we move on to, um, oh, just for a little bit of context as well, I know it's about nearly 10 minutes into the video, but I will split this into about two halves where I do the DVDs first, then I do the Blu-rays. But yeah, we got my kaiju movies, we got Godzilla Final Wars. Godzilla movies are really, really hard to find in the UK. Like, they're either really expensive or they're just not available at all. Like, we haven't got them on street. Like, Japanese ones, we only have up to the show. We only have all the Showa films in the UK. I really want to get that Blu-ray box set with the Criterion Collection where it has all 15 of the Showa fi period films. But it's so hard to find and so hard. It's really expensive as well. So yeah, this copy of Godzilla Final Wars, despite it's my favourite Godzilla film out of the entire Japanese series, it is a bootleg copy, which I did get on eBay, I will admit. But it's just a fantastic movie to find and hunt down. Then we've got uh, Godzilla 2014, the start of the mo which is the start of the Monsterverse. I've got Kong Skull Island. I'm waiting for the anime series to come out on Netflix very, very soon. Uh, Godzilla King of the Monsters and Godzilla vs. Kong. So that's all the kaiju movies I have on DVD. Then we move on to comic book movies. So I've got the original Blade starring Wesley Snipes. Awesome movie, really underrated, and it's really unfortunate that the um, production of the MCU version of Blade is constantly just off and on again. Then we've got Blade 2, best in the series, honestly. I've got Blade Trinity. Um, most people hate it. I'm... Oh, I've got a love-hate relationship with it, if I'm going to be completely honest. Then I got Blade, the House of Cthon, uh, which is just the first few episodes of the Blade TV series from the early 2000s, just cut into uh, a movie-length version. Then I got Spider-Man 1, the original Tobey Maguire one. I got Spider-Man 2 and Spider-Man 3. Everyone loves the Maguire trilogy. Obviously, Tom Holland is like the new shit, honestly. And yeah, it's understandable, really. Uh, but yeah, I also got uh, Spider-Man 2.1, the extended edition of the original Spider-Man 2. Great movie, great extended scenes. Definitely better than the original version, I would personally say. Then we got Spider-Man Homecoming. Probably the only real MCU film I actually own on DVD. <laughs> um, yeah, it's actually really fun. I actually do like uh, MCU Spider-Man quite a lot. Uh, then we got Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Um, I am I am very looking forward to watching Across the Spider-Verse when that eventually comes out in the UK. I do want to go see it in the cinemas very, very, very soon. Uh, then we got Venom. Uh, it was The first Venom was okay. It wasn't anything particularly fantastic. But it was alright. Not exactly what I was expecting for a Venom movie, but it was average, I guess. Uh, X-Men Origins Wolverine, obviously the most universally hated Marvel films ever, <laughs> among very few others. Now I've got The Wolverine, a bit, a, a bit better in my opinion, honestly, and possibly one of my few favourite X-Men movies. And we got Logan as well, easily my favourite out of all the X-Men related movies, other than like Deadpool and X-Men 2 and the original X-Men. Then we got The Punisher, the first one with Thomas Jane. Unfortunately, I don't own the Dolph Lundgren version of The Punisher, but it's still a pretty good movie. And the video game of it is even better as well. Then we got Ghost Rider, the first one with Nicolas Cage, the extended cut. Then I've got Ghost Rider 2, The Spirit of Vengeance, uh, the 2003 Anne Lee Hulk movie. It, yeah, it's a bit long for anyone, but it's possibly one of the better Hulk films right next to... well. Out of the very few Hulk films that exist, I think the 2003 Hulk movie is possibly the closest to being good. Then we've got Deadpool 1, Deadpool 2. I saw both of these in cinemas, and I love them both very dearly. I've got Batman Forever and Batman and Robin. Uh, obviously, Batman and Robin's the most memed out. Like, it's been talked to death about how bad Batman and Robin is, and it is pretty obvious on how and the why. Uh, we've got Tim Burton's 1989 Batman. Um, Batman Returns. Batman Returns, funny enough, it is my favourite Batman movie of all time, and I would say it's better than the Dark Knight trilogy. Anyone wants to spread their opinion about that, feel free to hate me in the comments. <laughs> uh, we've got Batman Begins. Uh, I would openly say, though, out of 
if I had to pick one film out of the Dark Knight trilogy, Batman Begins is my favourite one out of the three. Uh, then you got Batman Gotham Knight, uh, one of the few animated, well, one of the, I say few, but it's actually like a bajillion animated films that DC put out and now still putting out to this day. Uh, really good. Uh, apparently, I believe it's done by the Wachowskis. And it's just an anthology Batman story where it's just multiple stories that don't have anything to do with each other, all just connected to one. Uh, Batman Ninja, the only Batman anime movie that exists. <laughs> it's terribly, oddly fantastic. To put it in the most awkward sentence possible. I remember seeing this in the cinemas for my 18th birthday and it was actually really, really badly like, good. <laughs> uh, Batman the Killing Joke, I got the graphic novel of this, I read the graphic novel before I saw the movie. If you skip the first 20 minutes or so of it, you actually do get the Killing Joke graphic novel done almost completely justice. I got Batman Gotham by Gaslight, an underrated graphic novel in my opinion. Because um, it's done by, well, it's written and illustrated by the same guy who does the Hellboy comics. Um, bloody, oh, I forgot his name. It'll come to me soon, at some point. <laughs> uh, then we got Superman Doomsday, really good movie. Um, not as, well, I would say it's almost as good as The Death of Superman. But it is a good um, tie-in to the 90s animated series of Superman. Then we got Injustice. I was going to hate this movie when it came out, but I surprisingly did like it, actually. Then we got uh, Seth Rogen's The Green Hornet. Uh, we got the 2004 Hellboy movie. Hellboy Sword of Storms. Um, and Hellboy Blood and Iron. Part of an animated series that they were going to do. There was going to be a third one in production, but... It came, well, Blood and Iron came out roughly around the same time as the second Hellboy movie. And I think it was because, like, Star's Productions ran into some, like, trouble trying to get the rights to make a third one, which was going to be based on one of the side characters from the Hellboy comics, Lobster Johnson, who did end up having his own spin-off comic book series. But other than that, I can't really say for sure on that. Uh, then we've got Hellboy 2, The Golden Army. One of the most beloved Hellboy movies. Like, out of all five Hellboy movies, I think this one is possibly the most beloved by fans. Then you got the Hellboy reboot with um, David Harbour. Um, I liked it, despite everyone's shit on it. I really, really, really enjoyed it, actually. It was a little bit more faithful to the comics, but obviously, if something's 100% faithful, obviously not everyone's going to like it to start with. But what can you do? Then we got the Toxic Avenger collection. I got all four movies in here. I love trauma films from the bottom of my heart. I've seen every single one to this point, and I am very, very excited for the Toxic Avenger remake when it eventually does come out. Then I got Sin City 2 right here. I read all the graphic novels of Sin City, possibly one of my favorite comic book franchises of all time. And I got Sin City 2, A Dame to Kill 4. Uh, I got 300, the original. I even do have the rare hard, one of the rare hardcover editions of 300. Uh, one of the greatest Frank Miller comic books ever written to this date as well, and historically accurate. I got the original Kick-Ass. Uh, decent movie. The comic book is actually alright as well. I would recommend reading the comic book first before seeing the movie. Uh, Kick-Ass 2, obviously not as good as the first one, but still pretty good. Then you got Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. I already reviewed this movie on the channel, but obviously for those of you who definitely know from that video, I am a big, big Scott Pilgrim fan. I've got all the graphic novels, i got the soundtrack, I've got the video game. I'm just a huge, huge fan of Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. So then next to that i got Brandon Lee's The Crow, another one of my all-time favourite comic book movies, possibly one of my favourite comic books ever written as well. Uh, I would definitely recommend checking out both the graphic novel and the movie if you've never seen it before. I got Spawn, the director's cut. Um, Spawn, I would say, is one of the most underrated comic book characters of all time. The movie isn't that good, I will admit. But the director's cut is definitely the better version out of the theatrical version. Uh, then we got my live action, my very small handful of live action anime movies. I thought I might as well count them in comic book because obviously manga is a form of comic books. Uh, I got the Japanese version of Death Note, great movie. 
uh, Death Note 2, The Last Name, also a great movie. Both adapt most of the manga really accurately. I would reckon it's better than the Netflix version, I will definitely say that much. Uh, Death Note, El Change the World, a kind of prequel, but it takes place in between both movies. And it's about the origin story on how El met Nier. Uh, then we've got JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Diamond is Unbreakable, Chapter 1. Obviously, those who know me know that I fucking love JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. <laughs> and obviously, I would own the live-action movie of JoJo. Uh, then we got... Now we're moving on to, like, action movie. I had to mix a few genres together, honestly. So I got... Now we're going into, like, more action and drama-based movies. So I got Reservoir Dogs... Uh, Pulp Fiction, Kill Bill Volume 1 and Kill Bill Volume 2. I like Quentin Tarantino films. I've watched every single thing that he's done to this date. Um, yeah, I do like quite a lot of the movies. And to be fair, Kill Bill was the first Tarantino film I actually saw. Uh, then we've got Die Hard. Best Christmas movie ever made. I will fight anyone that says otherwise. Uh, then i got Fight Club. Great movie. Great... Uh, book and the graphic novel they did for Fight Club 2 and a Fight Club 3 is also pretty interesting to look at. So, if you get a chance to see any of that, I would highly recommend you do. Moving forward, trying to move some of these out of the way. Alright, so further in the back, you could probably not see it very well. I've got uh, Machete Kills in the back. I do love Robert Rodriguez movies as well, just as much as I like um, Tarantino movies. I got John Wick chapters 1, 2, and 3. I haven't got John Wick 4 yet, nor have I actually seen it. I also got Hobo with a Shotgun buried somewhere in in between. Really good underrated um, B movie. I got the Swedish miniseries of the Millennium Saga. I got the extended cut and the theatrical cuts of The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, The Girl Who Played with Fire, and The Girl Who Kicked the Hornet's Nest. And I got the... Um, David Fincher reboot of it. Uh, next to that, I got Leon the Professional. Great movie. Uh, possibly one of the best dramas I've ever. Seen. Possibly one of the best dramas I've ever actually seen in my life. Honestly. Uh, then next to that, we got Sucker Punch. A l Some people shit on this movie for like no real reason. I find it actually to be quite fine, despite what other people say. Then we got uh, The Shape of Water. A pretty good movie. Uh, definitely earned that Oscar, that it d um, so rightfully earned. Then I got uh, Terminator Salvation. Now we're going on to like more sci-fi stuff. So I now got um, Terminator Salvation, Terminator 3 Rise of the Machines, Terminator 2 Judgment Day, and the original Terminator. If I were to say which one is obviously my favourite, obviously I would have to go with the second movie. Like, not only is it one of the best sequels ever made, but it's also one of the best movies ever made in general. But if I were to rank my favourite, like, from my favourite movie to the least favourite, it would go uh, from best to worst, uh, Terminator 2, Terminator 1, Terminator 3, uh, Terminator Salvation... Actually, no, Terminator Genesis... Uh, Terminator Dark Fate then Salvation, and then Genesis at the bottom. Then we got Pitch Black. Great movie. Possible, I'm really excited for the next um, uh, next Riddick movie, uh, The Chronicles of Riddick Furia. I got The Chronicles of Riddick as well. <laughs> uh, then I got the entire Back to the Future trilogy, one of my all-time favourite trilogies ever. I got the director's cut of Donnie Darko, Great movie. Me and my sister actually do love this movie a whole lot. I got Turbo Kid. Gr another, just like Hobo with a Shotgun, another great um, B, well, more like a B list movie. Uh, especially if you like more sci like 80s style sci fi stuff, like proper like Mad Max kind of stuff. Then I got the original three Men in Black movies. I saw Men in Black International when it hit streaming. And I gotta say, I really, really hated it <laughs> quite a lot. Uh, next, we got Mars Attacks, a great movie, possibly one of Tim Burton's better films before everything kind of went to shit after um, Dark Shadows. Uh, then we got Clockwork Orange, great movie, great book, really good piece of literature. It takes a couple times, just like the Silmarillion, it takes a few times for you to actually understand it by the re by the uh, writing style of it. 
Then we got Evolution, criminally underrated movie. And it had an awesome animated series that came out after. If you definitely get the chance to watch Evolution, I would highly, highly recommend it. It's so good. Uh, then we got Tim Burton's Planet of the Apes. Really, really bad movie. Great makeup effects by Rick Baker. But the... And to be honest, the ending of the movie is actually really good. <laughs> but it's a real shame we'll never get a sequel to it. Then we got Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. It's the only one of the reboot trilogy I actually do own. To be fair, I have watched them all on Disney Plus before. I even would casually do a Planet of the Apes marathon whenever I get the chance. Then we got James Cameron's Avatar. Great movie for the time. Hasn't aged well in my personal opinion. I know a lot of people have ripped into my opinion about this before. I would say it's literally just the plot of Pocahontas and Fern Gully just put together, really, if you think about it. Next, we got Iron Sky, the director's cut, and Iron Sky, the coming race. Goddamn hilarious Nazi movies. <laughs> Possibly one of the funniest shit I've ever seen in my entire life. Like, literally, the first movie is just about the Nazis on the moon, and they capture a black guy and turn him into a white guy, and they turn him into a Nazi as well. <laughs> And then you've got the second one, which is literally about Adolf Hitler is still alive, but he's in the center of the earth with the dinosaurs. And it's also about lizard people as well. And you've got a third one that's still being made at the moment, which is going to be about Russians on Mars. Uh, moving on, we have the original Robocop trilogy, which is awesomely fantastic. I love the first one all the time. I rewatch it at least once a year, because it's that good. Uh, Robocop 2 I don't like very much. Robocop 3 I like better than the second one. <laughs> I know a lot of people shit on Robocop 3 a lot more than the second one, but it's... I would say it's better. And with the remake, I honestly wasn't really that fond of it. I really, really did not like the remake. Now we're moving on to more comedy stuff. I've got Bill and Ted Face the Music. I love the original two Bill and Ted movies, and this one was a, de a pretty decent send-off to the original. Then I've got Meet the Spartans. It's good the first time you watch it, but then the rest of the times you watch it, it kind of dawns on you a little bit on how bad it actually is. Then we've got Aqua Teen Hunger Force, colon, movie film for theatres for DVD. I love the TV show of Aqua Teen Hunger Force, but when, they, when I found out about this movie, you goddamn well know I definitely went out my way to buy this the moment I... well, the chance I got it. Uh, then we got the Inbetweeners movie. Obviously, if you're from the UK, you'd be familiar with the Inbetweeners. A uh, great TV show, and well, it's possibly one of the greatest comedy shows in the UK still to this day. And the first Inbetweeners movie, really good. The second one, I've only seen a couple times, but it was actually all right. All right, now on to the next shelf. We got more comedy movies over here. Uh, over here I've got the entire original Cornetto trilogy. I've got The World's End, Hot Fuzz, and Shaun of the Dead. Great movie starring um, Simon Pegg, Nick Frost, and being directed by Edgar Wright. Obviously, I'm a big fan of uh, the TV show Spaced. Uh, if you've seen that, then you've probably seen these movies, or you've probably seen these movies and not seen Spaced. I would recommend checking out one or the other. Really good TV show. Real shame it only lasted two seasons. Uh, next, we've got South Park, Bigger, Longer, and Uncut. This was actually my introduction to South Park, because it was through this that I ended up watching the TV show and then eventually really, really got into it afterwards. And I still watch South Park to this day. I haven't watched the most recent season of South Park, but I will eventually get around to it when I get the chance. And then we got Ali G in the house, the movie. I love Sasha Barra Cohen. I find him really, really funny. Uh, I've seen every single movie that he's done. I've seen this, I've seen Borat, I've seen Borat 2, I've seen um, Bruno, the Brothers Grimsby, the Dictator, all that good shit I've seen. Um, then we've got Kevin and Perry Go Large, another classic UK comedy film. Kind of in the same vein as In Between Us, but a little bit camp, because it's based on a, um old British TV show called Henry... It's either Henry Enfield or Harry Enfield in Chums. I cannot remember for the life of me. I always get it confused. But it's a really good movie. Especially like, it's shut your brain off good movie. Then we got The Kung Fu Hustle. A really, really good martial arts comedy movie. Um, especially if you like, um, if you want to see like a live action anime done right. 
the Kung Fu Hustle, I would say, is definitely in that kind of vein. Uh, then we got Little Nicky. Arguably one of my favorite Adam Sandler films. <laughs> like, everything pre-click is good. Everything from click afterwards is bad. Uh, Napoleon Dynamite, another early 2000s classic. Obviously, if you lived through that time period of, like, very dry humor or, like, audible scenery and stuff like that, obviously you've probably seen Napoleon Dynamite. And especially the hype around this film when it was coming out was real. Uh, next we got the entire original Jackass movies. I got 1 to 3.5. I saw Jackass Forever when it came out in the cinemas, and I loved it so much. I, I grew up on the TV series. I grew up with the video game. I love all that good shit of Jackass. Next we got Action Point, not as good as the Jackass movies, but loosely based on an actual true story, it's alright. Then we got Jackass Presents Bad Grandpa, I need to get the extended cut of this. Really good movie, and I remember there was a lot of confusion between this and the Robert De Niro movie that was coming out around the same time, called Dirty Grandpa. Um, but yeah, obviously when it became a bit obvious when it came out on DVD, like, this was obviously, like, the Jackass spin-off, and the other one was just a terrible comedy with Robert De Niro and Zac Efron. Uh, next we got Blazing Saddles, one of the most controversial films ever made. Uh, I love all of Mel Brooks' films. I've seen Young Frankenstein, well, I would say my favourite Mel Brooks' films, especially up to now, it would probably be a mixture of Mostly is parody stuff, so it'd be like Blazing Saddles, Young Frankenstein, Spaceballs, and even Pause of Fury. I haven't seen History of the World yet, but I really, really, really do want to at some point, very, 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 very soon. Uh, then next to that, we've got Tenacious D and the Pick of Destiny. I'm a big fan of Tenacious D's music, always have been, and I've always been a big fan of um, Jack Black as well. If you guys ever get the chance to see this, especially if you love old Jack Black stuff, uh, definitely check it out. Uh, then we got Austin Powers, International Man of Mystery, the first of the Austin Powers trilogy. Um, am I looking forward to an Austin Powers 4 if it ever actually happens? Well, I probably might see it. Then we got Austin Powers 2, The Spy Who Shagged Me. Uh, the first Austin Powers film I actually saw of the three, because uh, I had the DVD hidden somewhere in storage. Uh, then you got Austin Powers Gold Member. Probably my favourite out of the three, I would say. I know it's a controversial take, probably, in some people's eyes, but I would say Goldmember is possibly my favourite one. Then we got Kevin Smith movies. Now, I actually do plan at some point maybe to review all of Kevin Smith's films, like especially from his View Askew universe. So I've got Clerks 1, great movie, what actually introduced me to Kevin Smith. More Rats, also a great movie. Can't wait for more rats too. Chasing Amy, pretty good. Not as good as the other ones though. Then we've got Dogma, great movie. Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back, really, really funny. Uh, Clerks 2, my f possibly my favourite out of most of Kevin Smith's films. Then we've got Jay and Silent Bob Reboot, which got me back into Kevin Smith's stuff. And Clerks 3, also really, really good. Really emotional as well, when I saw it the first time around. Uh, then we got Bad Santa, classic movie. I watch it every Christmas whenever I can. Uh, got Ted, the extended cut. It was good for its time, and Ted 2 I also kind of find as a guilty pleasure, if I'm going to be completely honest. I don't watch Family Guy as much as I used to, but it's still alright. The Happy Time Murders, real fucking cringe humour, but it's still pretty decent, I guess. I, I do like my cringe humour every now and then, and especially my raunchy comedies and things like that. Uh, then we got The Hangover, classic movie. Absolutely hilarious. I love the entire trilogy. Like Every time I see it playing on TV, I just sit down and watch it whenever I get the chance. Uh, the Disaster Artist. Now, little fact, uh, Tommy Wiseau's The Room is not very easily accessible in the UK. Like, I think the only closest we could get is if you spend like extortionate amount of money on it on like Amazon or eBay or if you actually go to Tommy Wiseau's website and find it there but yeah it's really hard to find I've never read the book of the disaster artist but I've been told it's better than the movie and for those of you who obviously don't know in, just in case the disaster artist is loosely based on the true story of the production of the room next we got Monty Python's 
The Life of Brian and Monty Python and the Holy Grail. I love Monty Python's Flying Circus, possibly one of my favourite comedy sketch shows of all time, and I've always loved Monty Python as long as I, since I can remember. Uh, then we got Paul the Extended Cut, Nacho Libre, one of my all-time favourite Jack Black films, I would easily argue towards, and possibly one of my favourite Nickelodeon films as well. Uh, next we got Road Trip, the Extended Cut, great movie. The sequels are not as good as the original, but still pretty decent. Then we got Train Spotting, great movie, great book, great soundtrack as well. And Train, well T2 Train Spotting, it was also all right. Uh, definitely recommend it if you've seen the first one. Then we got Bubble Boy, underrated uh, early 2000s comedy with Jake Gyllenhaal. Um, then we got How High and Half Baked, two great movies. The first one being um, with Method Man and Red Man, two really good rappers that used to be part of. Um, was I believe they were part of Wu Tang Clan. Then you got uh, I might be wrong though. <laughs> My knowledge on rap music is not as good as it used to be. And then we got Half Baked with Dave Chappelle, really hilarious movie. <laughs> uh, then we got video game movies. Now I've got a very very short list of these though, so don't worry. So we got the original Mortal Kombat from the 90s. My fate possibly a really really good movie. I know a lot of people will probably shit on it now, saying it's not as good as they remember, but I'd say it's really accurate to the games, despite the fact there's no fatalities in there whatsoever. Then we got Mortal Kombat 2021, great movie, great fatalities, and I'm really excited for the sequel, especially with the fact that Carl Urban is coming in to play Johnny Cage. Then we got Mortal Kombat Legends Scorpion's Revenge, I was pretty excited when that was coming out, and I watched uh, the sequel to it, The Battle of the Realms, I haven't seen the third one yet. But I will probably get around to it when I can. Then we've got Resident Evil Degeneration. Pretty good movie. Better than the Paul Anderson films. <laughs> Without a doubt. And then we got Detective Pikachu. I saw that multiple times in the cinemas. Thought it was really, really good. Uh, Street Fighter 2, the animated movie. Really good movie as well. Uh, same with Street Fighter Alpha. Just as good, if not better. Then we've got the Ratchet and Clank movie. Very forgotten film. <laughs> And really deserved a sequel after that cliffhanger ending. And then we got Doom starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Now we're moving on to more fantasy based stuff. I've got Dark Crystal, one of my all time favourite fantasy films. Easily I would argue about that. Uh, I would say it's also possibly... I would prefer to watch The Dark Crystal over The Labyrinth. That might be a bit of a hot take to some people but still. Uh, then we got The Hobbit Battle of the Five Armies. The Hobbit, Desolation of Smaug, and The Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey. A lot of people hated on all three films. I feel like they don't deserve the hate they got, if I'm going to be honest. But at least it's better than the Amazon Prime series, um, Rings of Power. Let's move some more shit out of the way. So yeah, behind here I've got all three Lord of the Rings movies extended editions. Love them really dearly. I managed to binge them all once in a single day before, and that is possibly the best 12 hours I spent in my entire life. <laughs> then we got Pan's Labyrinth, great movie, never read the book. Uh, my sister has it, and she says it's really, really good. Next we got uh, Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald, and Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. I arguably like these two films, just as much as I love Harry Potter. Uh, but in terms of the third one, obviously not as good. Then we're moving on to more animate, well, Ameri well, more Western animated films. I've only got a very small amount of these ones. I've got Scooby Doo on Zombie Island, everyone's favourite Scooby Doo film, other outside of the live action ones with Matthew Lillard. Then we've got Who Framed Roger Rabbit, one of my favourite Disney films ever made. Uh, Tim Burton's Corpse Bride, a great movie, and Hoodwinked, one of the most memed out films to date and deserves more memes. Now we're moving on to anime. Uh, so anime films I got, I've got One Piece Gold. I love One Piece as much as the next person. I prefer, the, I do prefer the manga over the anime, if I'm going to be kind of honest about it. Then we've got One Piece Stampede, awesome movie. Because um, I remember hyping myself up watching this before I went and saw One Piece Red when that came out. Uh, then we've got Cowboy Bebop, the movie. I saw this before I watched the anime show and thought it was really good. Uh, Ghost in the Shell 1 and Ghost in the Shell 2 Innocence. A lot, lot better than the um, 
Angelina Jolie movies. Never saw the TV show, though. Apparently, the TV show was actually alright. Then we got Yu-Gi-Oh! Dark Sided Dimensions. Obviously, I'm a big fan of Yu-Gi-Oh! So, well, mostly the original Yu-Gi-Oh! and Yu-Gi-Oh! GX are, I would say, my favourite parts of the series. Everything after that was not really good. <laughs> Uh, now we're moving on to anime TV show. Well, mostly just TV shows now. Then I'll be moving on to the Blu-rays. So with TV shows, I've got the original Helsing OVA series. Uh, I saw this and then got into the manga. Then I got into watching Helsing Ultimate Abridged. Then I watched the original version of it. Thought it was really good. I got all 25 episodes of Attack on Titan Season 1. I've only ever seen Season 1. I've never actually seen Season 2, if I'm honest. Because the hype kind of died off after that. Then we got Devil May Cry, the anime series. Pretty good. A nice tie-in that takes place in between Devil May Cry 3 and 4. Um, then we've got Panty and Stocking with Garter Belt. Great show. Really fucking hilarious. And I'm really, really excited for season 2 when that actually drops eventually. Then we've got High School of the Dead. Uh, the very first adult anime... Well, not, a, not like... Um, hentai or anything like that, but it's like the first like borderline e like really etchy trashy anime series I watched and thought it was the funniest shit I've ever seen. Uh, then we got Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, one of my all-time favorite animes and mangas I've ever read and watched. Then we got Spawn, the animated series, both seasons, really good TV show, uh, better than the movie obviously, but just as good as the early comics. Then I've got seasons 1, 2, and 3 of Archer. One of my favourite animated comedy shows of all time, and I'm really upset about the final season coming very, very soon. But when it comes out, I will immediately watch when I get the chance. Then I've got Invader Zim, the incomplete original series. Uh, one of my favourite Nickelodeon shows of all time, without a doubt. Plus, I like Jordan Vasquez's art style as well, which is just so good. Then we've got Beavis and Butthead, Mike Judge's Most Wanted. I want to get the entire Beavis and Butthead box set because it's one of my favourite MTV shows. Outside of like Jackass, Daria, uh, Celebrity Deathmatch and stuff like that. Then I've got all three and a half-ish seasons of Ren and Stimpy. I've got, the, I've got the uncensored versions of the first two seasons. Uh, and I've got all three and a half, and I've got seasons three and a half as well. I don't have the adult version of Ren and Stimpy yet, but that's still like a really hard to find box set at the moment, especially like price wise. I've got Batman the animated series from the 90s, my favorite version of Batman other than Michael Keaton. Like Kevin Conroy to me, may whatever rest his soul upon, um, is still my favorite Batman. Then I got. The entire box set of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Love the TV show to, like all the time. The movie I'm not too keen on, obviously. Um, really wish they brought it back, but I read all the comics as well afterwards and thought it was really, really good. Then I got all five seasons of Angel, just as good as Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I know a lot of people are mostly split on the series, but I think it's just as good. And then we got Ash vs. Evil Dead, all three seasons of it. Really good TV show. Uh, shame it got cancelled after season 3, but Bruce Campbell would say he wouldn't mind coming back to the series as a voice acting role. Or if they, if they are, there are still talks, I believe, of them bringing it back as an animated series. Then we got the Dune miniseries. I've read the book, I've seen the original David Lynch film, and I've seen the reboot. This is actually really good because it adapts pretty much the entirety of the first book. And it's split into three hour and a half long segments. Then we got... So seasons 1 to 3 of Little Britain. If you grew up in the UK in the early 2000s, you would definitely have known Little Britain, or at least heard of it. Still, like, not aged well, like, with today's standards, but it's still a classic show. Then we've got Little Britain Live. Uh, it was a one-time uh, tour they did, but it was only just one section they did where they recorded the entire thing and when they did a live filming of it in um, Blackpool. Never actually got to see it, because obviously I was way too young to go see it, but it's still really, really good. I got seasons 1 to 4 of Game of Thrones, arguably the only good seasons of the entire show. <laughs> I've got In Between Us, seasons 1, 2, and 3, obviously a classic UK TV show. 
especially if you like uh, more adult humour about teenagers. Now I've got all five seasons of Breaking Bad, one of my all-time favourite drama TV shows. I'm re-watching Better Call Saul at the moment, so yeah. Then we've got all seven seasons of Parks and Recreation. Really, really good TV show. Absolutely adore it with all my heart. And I'd say it's just, I put it on par with like the American version of The Office on how much I actually do love it. And then we got finally, with TV shows, I got the entire box set of The X Files. All nine, well, the first nine seasons plus the two movies. I only saw up to season 10. I've never actually watched season 11 just yet. Right, so that's all the DVDs. Now, uh, without wasting more time than what I already have, let's now move on to the Blu rays. Right, so now we're gonna, instead of showing you, because I've got none of my Blu rays on any shelves at the moment, so I thought I'd actually show you guys um, the act how the Blu rays actually look at the moment. So, uh,. So I haven't organised them in any genre at the moment, but I do have them put up in groups mostly because I've got all the anime stuff separate at the moment because I am collecting at the moment mostly some uh, anime stuff at the, to begin with. <laughs> so we get some of that out of the way now. So we've got the entirety of uh, Dragon Ball Super. I've got all 131 episodes of it. I'm currently waiting on another season of Dragon Ball Super just like a lot of other hardcore Dragon Ball fans. Um, because obviously it only goes up to the end of the Tournament of Power arc, and we're waiting for another season where it finally goes into like the Galactic Patrol one, and the, um, the Moro arc. And then we have Demon Slayer, the Mugen Train. I never saw it in the cinemas, but I waited until the Blu-ray came out. Uh, I saw it, then I saw the, um, the TV version. Didn't like the TV version as much as the movie, but I do think, honestly, in my personal opinion, uh, all Demon Slayer fans, please do not hate me about this. I did not like the ending of this arc, <laughs> if I'm going to be honest. <laughs> uh, then we got uh, Soul Eater, another great show, uh, more from like my early generation of anime. Like the early 2000s, like obsession with anime, stuff like Naruto, Dragon Ball, and Kingdom Hearts, like more stuff like on that kind of level. Um, it kind of has a similar premise to something on the lines of like Bleach, but I would recommend it if you uh, are looking for more like slightly older animes, like in terms of like aged. Then we got. My Hero Academia, World Heroes Mission. Now, arguably not my favourite out of the three My Hero Academia films. Uh, my favourite My Hero Academia movie would obviously go to the first one, which is My Hero Academia 2 Heroes. But this was a nice in-between um, movie. Set Was it supposed to be set between seasons 4 and 5? But still a pretty decent enough movie. I might be wrong on that, but you can argue in the comments about when the movies actually take place. Then we got Prison School. Hilariously raunchy. I really like this um, style of humour. It gets really dark, at, like unnecessarily dark at some points, but it's also like really, really good. <laughs> and the live action TV show they did in Japan not long after this actually finished. It was actually really good. Then we got the Dragon Ball Z modern film trilogy which has the three most recent Dragon Ball films not including the newest one Dragon Ball Super Superhero which I still have yet to get but I am ordering it on payday soon so yeah get ready for that but yeah this comes with the extended cut of Dragon Ball Z Battle of Gods and Dragon Ball Z Resurrection F and Dragon Ball Super Broly I watched all three of these in the cinema and absolutely adored them all because Dragon Ball Battle of Gods got me back into loving Dragon Ball again. And then we got the entire original Dragon Ball Z 13 film collection plus it has the two TV specials in it. But the ones it has in it, it has um, obviously the Dead Zone, The World's Strongest, um, The Tree of Might, Lord Slug, Cooler's Revenge, uh, The Return of Cooler, Super Android 13, 
Brawly Legendary Super Saiyan, Bojack Unbound, Brawly Second Coming, Bio Brawly, Fusion Reborn, Wrath of the Dragon, uh, Bardock, Father of Goku, and the History of Trunks specials. Absolutely great, if, especially if you love the original version of Dragon Ball Z. Uh, definitely worth watching, especially if you want to watch like something that's not really can. I think the only one that comes close to canon in this, or well, the only ones in this in collect in this entire collection, the only ones that are close to being canon is the Dead Zone, and um, the History of Trunks. Like those ones are possibly the closest to actually being canon to the original series. Then we got Neon Genesis Evangelion, the complete original collection. This comes with all the episodes of the original anime series, plus it comes with the original two films, uh, The End of Evangelion and The Death of Evangelion. I've Honestly, I've never actually watched the reboots, that they, like the reboot series they did, where the creator of the original series obviously had no idea what to do for the ending, or couldn't even explain any of it half the time. So instead he decided to reboot the entirety of the franchise into a series of four film like four or five films he did. So remember the last one came out on Prime as an exclusive, which was pretty good. Then we got JoJo's Bizarre Adventure set one. This comes with just uh parts one and two. Uh, they decided to put, like, from, I believe I probably might have mentioned in my review of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part 1 and Part 2, that they put the first two parts of the franchise in the same season, because they are relatively, other than Part 7, they are relatively the shortest parts of the franchise. And obviously you guys know that I love me, some JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Then we got... The first half of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part 3, Stardust Crusaders. Uh, this only does the journey part of the series, so it only take covers the first half of Part 3. Then we got the second half of Part 3, which does the Egypt arc of Stardust Crusaders. Uh, then we got... I'm going to turn these covers inside out for a sec. Because I pref I do although I do prefer the um, the reverse covers of these I will actually have to try and sort some of them out. But yeah, I got the first half of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part Four: Diamond is Unbreakable. Obviously, I've only just um, well not just I did put up my review of this uh, a little while back, and obviously if you guys want to hear my opinion on JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part Four, go check that out. And then obviously I've got the second half, once I actually sort this cover out. This is what happens when you make decent covers. <laughs> and when you order bootleg copies on eBay. I will admit, like, the some of the JoJo ones, like, all the ones from part... Well, my Blu-rays of the later... Well, after JoJo Part 3... The Blu-rays of them were really, really hard to find in the UK, so I had to find, like, Australian copies and stuff. So then we got JoJo's, the second half of JoJo Part 4 as well, which covers, like, all... Very much from, like, since Yoshikage Kira was introduced to the series onwards. Obviously, like I said about the first one, you guys can check out my thoughts of it in the review, which you could probably find on my channel. And then I have another one... I really should have organised this before I actually put it up. <laughs> but yeah, I got um, the first half of Jojo Golden Wind. Um, I will review this very, very, very soon when I get the chance to. Um, cause obviously, you guys know I love Jojo, and I did say that I plan to review, obviously, parts 5 and 6 when the opportunity rises. And then we got the second half of part five, which is supposed to be... Well, the episodes from this one is supposed to carry on from when they had the first encounter with Diavolo. Spoilers if you guys have not seen JoJo. <laughs> uh, 
Do I want to get JoJo Part 6 if they... Well, I know they released a Blu-ray for it in China, but that's obviously going to be a little bit of a pain in the ass to try and find on eBay and stuff. Next, I've got Helsing Ultimate, the uh, kind of rebooted, also like a final version of Helsing that they released as an anime. Uh, because the manga was actually finishing around this time of the last couple episodes were coming out. Really good series. Only about 10 episodes long, but each episode uh, varies in length between like around 45 minutes to about nearly 2 hours. But it is a pretty good watch, especially. Then we got Gremlins in 4K, one of my all-time favourite horror movies of all time, and one of my all-time favourite um, Christmas films ever as well. Uh, then I got the Ghostbusters Trilogy. Only contains 1, 2, and Afterlife. I refused to get the remake of it. The remake had potential, but obviously it didn't live up to the hype, and it was just really poorly handled, in my opinion. But obviously the original Ghostbusters is my favourite. Ghostbusters 2 was the first one I actually saw of the series, and I didn't see Afterlife in the cinemas, unfortunately. I really would have wanted to. But when I saw... Like, I pre-ordered this the moment I was able to. And I will admit, I actually did get really, really emotional uh, in certain scenes in Afterlife. Then we got David Lynch's June. Great movie. Uh, I know there's like multiple versions of this movie because David Lynch didn't have the time or budget to put all of the um, like 500 page book into a two hour film. Then we got Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City. Arguably the better, one of the better Resident Evil films. A lot better than the Wes Anderson films and possibly the most accurate one to the actual franchise. And I will shit on the Netflix series as much as I actually possibly can at some point in the future. Then we got Constantine, the entire series. Uh, based on the CW show but also based on the DC character. Criminally underrated TV show and I believe they should bring back Matt Ryan for a live action version of Constantine again at some point. Then we got Puppet Master 2, great movie. Uh, the series is a bit of a mixed bag, but it's still pretty decent enough, especially if you like weird horror stuff like I do. Then we got Rob Zombie's The World of El Haunted. <laughs> Rob Zombie's The Haunted World of El Super Bisto. I'm trying to get the comic book for it at the moment. I've seen this movie countless times already. And like I said already, like, I actually do like Rob Zombie stuff, because I find the man to be quite entertaining. Then we got the original 1986 Transformers movie. Really good movie, possibly the best Transformers movie I've seen other than Bumblebee, which I would say is also close to being an actually good Transformers movie. <laughs> then we got Riddick. I got the extended and theatrical cuts of this. Really, really good movie. Um, I'm still, like I said earlier in the video, I am wait still waiting for um, the next Chronicles of Riddick film. Very, very soon. Then we got Space Jam, the 20th anniversary steel case edition. The first Blu-ray I actually bought because Space Jam is actually one of my favourite movies ever conceived by man in the universe. Then we got Underworld Awakening. Uh, which has the 2D and 3D version. I do like the Underworld series. Uh, I do find it quite decent enough for what it is. Then we got Heavy Metal, a classic animated film, especially if you know like the comic books or if you watched um, Love, Death and Robots. Love, Death and Robots was loosely based on the concept of this um, series. Not so of this movie, which is based on a French comic book. Really, really good movie. Highly recommend it, especially if you like experimental animated stuff. Then we got Tim Burton's Nightmare Before Christmas. My favourite Tim Burton film, no doubt. And one of my favourite Christmas films in general. Then we have George Romero's Dawn of the Dead Collector's Edition. I got the, the three versions in this uh, one set. I got the original theatrical cut. I got the extended cut, which is about two and a half hours long. And I got the Dario Argento cut, where it mostly cuts out like some of the gore and stuff. So it feels like I'm watching Suspiria than the um, than the actual version. 
Then we got my kaiju stuff. I've got the Gamera Heisei collection. And the movies it actually comes with, we've got Gamera, Guardian of the Universe. Gamera 2, the... Um, I can't even remember what the name of it is actually called. The Attack of Legion. And we've got Gamera 3, The Revenge of Iris. And Gamera the Brave. Uh, the Heisei era of Gamera films, I would say is possibly my favourite out of all of them. And then I got the Showa box set of Gamera films, which consists of the original Gamera, Gamera the Giant Monster. Then we have um, Gamera vs. Baragon and Gamera vs. Gauss. Then we have Gamera vs. Virus and Gamera vs. Gurion. And then we got Gamera vs. Jigger, Gamera vs. Zigra, and Gamera the Super Monster. Well, there you have it. That is my entire Blu ray and DVD collection. Obviously, I think this is possibly the long, one of the few longest videos I've actually done in a while. But I hope you guys liked it. Um, obviously, I will now put another poll up on my Instagram soon, whether or not I do my video game collection or my comic book collection. Um, so, or if you want to see like what other stuff I have, um, like collection-wise, let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell notification, or well, hit the bell icon so you'll be notified on all my uploads and stuff. Um, uh, other than that, all I can say is. Uh, follow me on my social medias, which you can find in the description down below. And uh, I will see you guys in the next one.